show. Today I'm going to walk through the porch, cover all the little details um, of the framing uh, that we did, kind of explain those things to you. We are going to put some bottom trims on uh, our building, kind of show you what we do there. Uh, we're also going to get the rough in for the electrical and the water line coming into the house. We're going to show you how we do that. And another thing that we're going to do today is prep for our Versetta stone. This porch is going to have three feet of Versetta stone around the entire thing, so that'll be pretty cool. Got lots of windows and doors cut around, so that's going to be interesting. But we're going to get all that prepped today, so let's get going. All right, it's day 22 here at Westbury Acres. We're finishing up all the little details on the porch to get it ready uh, for when we got our steel. Um, this morning I ran errands, um, ordered all the steel. So. Let's turn you around and check this out and I'll kind of show you a bunch of little details of the porch and how um, that will aid us in finishing it off. So you can see this looks pretty cool. Wraps around the front of the house here. This pitch up here is between a 4 and 512. Um, it was designed to be a 512, but I wanted a little bit more room up here below this window. Uh, for my steel to go in so i just uh i lowered that and uh we custom built this a-frame out of six by six treated posts um, it turned out awesome um, the rest of the porch is on treated posts but has a double two by six header so you can see the posts were notched out for the two by six to set on them and then we filled in this bottom that allows us to either uh, stain these or wrap them um, just helps us out later um, both uh, ends of the porch have a hip instead of a gable um, so our purlins sit on the rafters but on, on the hip rafter they just die into them and then if you look down the middle um, this porch is going to get steel so we overhung a 2x4 on this side. We put a 2x4 down the middle. Uh, one so we'd have a place to screw the steel in the middle where the electrician and also so the electricians would have a place to mount their lights or wire for their lights. And then we have a 2x4 over here to mount our trims and our steel to. So the steel is ready to span 8 feet but I like to put a nailer in the middle. Um, it just works out a lot better. So this is all ready um, for steel. This hip rafter, um, I put a little support across um, just to make so it sits on on that. It's also um, toe nailed in. Um, these all have uh, hangers. Our sub rafters sit on our header and then are bracketed in on this end. Um, this six by six treated post uh, you can see it sitting on a block we'll get a hanger and then i will also put a hanger here right now there are two big structural lags going through the two by 12 into that holding up there but i will put a hanger i just like uh, to add that in so next this is um if we back up here you can see the a-frame and I like to, when I build these smaller A-frames, I like to make them 45 degree cuts. It makes life a lot easier, which we talked about. This ceiling will all be vaulted and then finished with steel, but these six by six tree posts will kind of define this space. I run a two by six across the peak, and then I will wrap that with color matched steel. Um, whatever we're doing up here, I think it's bright white, so that'll get wrapped in bright white. Then the electrician, has a nice solid place to attach his box for his you know usually people will put a big ceiling fan or chandelier or something here and then we come down here this is a detail i like to add at these corners um, so when my steel comes there will actually be two j channels going across here and then these will all 45 it just makes for a nice clean look and that's a two by six. And then there's a two by four on edge on the top. And then we support it there and then across here. And then it's all the same going down that way. Um, one other thing we do, since this is getting a ceiling, 
things getting spray foam is we'll take OS half inch OSB and just nail that up to the girts up there. It creates a solid surface there. And then when they spray the spray foam, um, it's not bulging the house wrap out or anything. Another detail this porch will get is it's getting um, Versetta stone up, you know, three feet ish. You know, somewhere, you know, depends on what four rows. I think they're eight inch, so we'll do four rows and a cap. I think it'll end up being around 35, 36 inches. So it'll uh, pretty much match the Wayne's coat. And then the concrete gets poured up below the door. And then <clears throat> all this under here will get filled with concrete um, for the finished uh, porch. So that'll be, so all this rebar will be um, in the concrete and then it goes down into the footing. Um, this is a nice, easy way to do this. And I know, you know, there's always gonna be somebody that doesn't like it, but this is a really quick way. This saves us a lot of time. And then if you think about these brackets, I don't use um, the through bolts here. We have these two lags and then we'll put um, some three and a half inch um, structural lags in here and that's more than enough um, to hold these posts so if you think about like a regular porch bracket you put one bolt into the concrete and then they get small screws so um, if you have any questions on this porch or anything any details about the porch go ahead and leave them in the comments and we'll do our best to answer them all right one other detail on this porch is um I think every porch I've ever built, I put a one foot overhang on it. Like most of these buildings have an 18 to two foot overhang, which looks, in my opinion, this is just my preference, looks way too big and overpowering. So I do a one foot overhang um, on my porches. And so this will get a half inch J trim along there. And then we can put our soffit in and then we'll have um, our fascia come over and finish that off. And then how I do the A-frames, anytime I add a fray frame, the soffit will come along here and then it'll just continue up the peak and then continue down and we'll go across. Um, same thing with that corner board in that corner of the porch. I'll do the same thing here. There'll be a double J that will come out and then the soffit will be cut at a 45 and it just makes a nice clean finish right there which we'll show you when we do that throwing these in here um, so if the electrician doesn't get here before concrete gets in he has a way to get his wires in here this is just schedule 80 it's gonna come up through the concrete floor it's gonna be surface mounted in the garage or in the shop um, and then I just take down go out like three feet so that way I can get the concrete in we don't have to wait uh, for the electrician or whatever to get in. We also, um, the water line is not ran in yet. So over here, we're bringing the service in for the house and then the water line. So got another schedule 80 coming in over here. And then we got a hole dug down uh, below the frost line. So this is like 48 inches down and then it goes out like three feet. And we use 245 so that they can um, push their pipe up in there 
and pop it up. So this morning we just have to glue those pipes together and backfill it. All right, day 23 here at Westbury Acres. We've got some rain coming. Um, all of our steel showed up that I ordered last week. It only took like two days and it was here. So that's awesome about using uh, the metal supplier that I used. But we're adding Versetta stone to this. So we've kind of just peeled up the block at house wrap. And we're adding um, ply, half inch plywood in there flush with the girts. And the way we're doing that is we're just adding, taking inch and a half, two by sixes, we just ran them through the planer down to an inch so that we can mount those in there and that plywood will sit flush. And the reason we're doing that is because we have so many windows on this porch that the Versetta zone is going to go around that um, it just makes a lot more sense for that plywood to be flush with the girts versus sticking out an inch because then when our trim would come down, it would hit that half inch plywood and it'd just be real goofy. So this is the simplest, cleanest way if you have a bunch of windows and stuff that are intersecting where your uh, Wayne's cord board is. Uh, so I'll show you that here in detail here in a second. As you can see we just got, this is the column right here. Just got a two by six. So it's playing down to the half inch plywood will sit in there. And then it just sits there flush mount. And then we'll just pull the house wrap back down, tape it, and then we'll just put a, really don't need a water barrier since we have the blocket, but we will put a black roofing felt just so if there's any chance that you could see around the Versetta stone, it'd be black and it wouldn't show like white house wrap. We're gonna try to wrap this up this morning and then you can see that big pile of metal right there, all our trims. We'll start getting our trims up here, trims around the base and start metaling this thing. All right guys, so I'm just, I make these little corners. So whatever color the client or the person is using for their sidewall, I get uh, what they call a post trim, which is just basically an L. Um, and this is uh, 10 inches. And I, I run that down underneath my grade board and up. That way when we put our first bottom trim on, this whole bottom is trimmed out the same color. It looks real nice. It also um, protects your bottom grade board and I think just is a lot nicer finish. So this stuff is pretty stiff. It's painted steel. So I just make corners because they're a lot easier to build and get a nice crisp uh, bend on them. And then I'll just take my next piece, overlap it and run it down the side. So I'm just gonna throw all these on quick and then the guys can go along and put this on. All of the doors, instead of trying to run a continuous piece, I just make pieces front of the door and then overlap the edges. It's just easier. So we'll do a test fit. And that fits pretty good under there. So what we'll do is we'll put a bead of silicone along there, put this up there, and then I'll just put a couple screws in it to hold it and then our side pieces will over, get overlapped. Now our next piece will just come straight to here, go up the side, and we can just run it that way. Um, this screw will get covered most likely, and this one will too if they pour, say they wanted to pour a slab out here, they would just bring the concrete up here or they could pour it down a couple inches. But then that's all protected right there.
Hello. Hey, Jose, this is Paul. How you doing, Paul? Good, what's going on, man? Oh, not much. Just Living the dream? Right. <laughs> Somebody else's <in> dream. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, I, uh, probably in the next couple weeks, I'm going to be getting the concrete done in this building I'm building. Okay. Um, so if you want to, I don't know if you have time now or you want me to just text you an address. It's a 56 by 80 with 18 foot sidewalls. And uh, we're going to do three inches in it. Okay. Yeah, why don't you, uh, if you don't mind, just send me the, send me the address and probably the measurements. And I can, uh, once I have a little time, I can work on uh work on that estimate and it'll be yeah i mean it's fine i'm i'm gonna use you so um it's gonna be one of those things that i'll have you do the all the outside walls and then there's gonna be half of it's gonna be a shop and then part of it's gonna be a house so then after i build that separating wall i'll have you okay. come back and do that wall that just separates the shop and the house oh sure does that make sense yeah yeah so i just wanted to get uh get on your radar for that um i'm hoping in a couple weeks that We'll get the concrete in, and then um, anytime after that, you can work on it or whatever. Okay. Yeah, so, that would be no problem. I'll just send you the address so you kind of know where it's at, and I'll send okay. you the measurements just so you have it. There are some garage doors just and that, windows and stuff. Just so I have an idea to, to get the, to order the foam. Yep, no problem, man. I'll, uh, I'll send it over right now. All right, bye. All right, bye. We need to nail that one there, and then I need to reset this for an inch up. to uh um when you overlap it i'll just nail both of them i would nail nail it like right here so put the stick like right here I'll just make sure the it's as level as possible so you're gonna have to get it turned more like that it needs to be nailed by wherever the grade stick is all right well trying to do trim and our lift won't start for some odd reason so that's gonna be a problem but got this garage door the side pieces on it'll be J channel that goes in here on the right side of the seat then there's a piece that will go across the top just like that but now it's time to put our square base on See, this is the trim that I put down below, so this is all just finished. Now come down here. Alright guys, that's going to be a wrap on this video. We had a couple really good days, even though our lift broke down. We're getting that taken care of now, so hopefully that will be remedied here in the next couple days. Uh, when we come back, we'll be putting metal on. But as always, we appreciate you guys watching. Don't forget, for those of you who want to design your own home, we have those services. You can email us at, at design at Mr. Post Frame. We have a Patreon group for you self-builders. We talk about different topics every month. Um, you can ask questions. Um, I'll answer them. It's really good if you're going to do this on your own. So don't forget to check that out. As always, thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button, and we'll catch you on the next video.